you guys the last two weeks have run the football really well in the second half, but mm -hmm. your first half numbers have not been as as productive. What, what's been the key to being a better second half running team? What do you got to do to run the football better in the first half? Man, I think the number one deal, we sit here and talk about starting fast, finishing strong. We just got to do a better start, better job starting off faster. I think we're doing a really good job of taking what's there. And, and I think what happens in the second half is that a lot of those plus two runs start to happen, and now it's turning into plus fours, plus fives. Uh, we just got to do a really good job in terms of gaining those early on. Um, not trying to do anything out of the ordinary, just continue to keep doing our job at a really high level. And I think it's going to continue to come. We just got to continue to work on starting faster though starting fast no mm -mm. just continue to keep doing what we're doing just doing it at a, a high level of execution <clears throat> what, what were your thoughts watching dylan perform the other night and, and then kind of what was going through your head when you went back and, and watched the tape of, of his performance as well? I mean, I think you, you see him consistently do that um, in the second half of games lately. Um, I think the thing about it is, that, man, he's just going out there executing at a really high level. He's doing a really good job of being able to feel the game. I think in the first half, you know, he was feeling the game, but a lot of times you're still trying to see how the defense is playing you from a structural standpoint, how the runs are fitting up. And I think once you get in your groove in the second half, I think that's when you see a lot of the, the bigger plays start to happen in terms of those four-yard runs are turning into 10-yard runs and vice versa. So he's doing a really good job. But sitting back there, nothing less than what I expect him to be able to do. Curious your vantage point of the fourth and one decision at your own ten yard line, and is that something you guys had worked on during the week? And then, and then talk about the trust in Deshaun in that uh, in that play. You know what? In that situation, that's something that <laughs> that we've been working on um, in terms of that package. Um, the call in that situation, you know, Coach Height went with it, and, and we all supported it. And then with Deshaun being in there, that was his drive. And you know what I'm saying? Whoever's in the ball game at that point in time, we got trust in him. And, and he did a really good job of being able to find his way in there, not just get us one, but get us six. So that was awesome. <clears throat> Obviously, Dylan's kind of been on the up and up since he got here his mm -hmm. freshman year. But this season, watching it on the sideline, do you kind of just like shake your head like in disbelief that he's able to go out there and do that? What's it like watching it live? I mean, watching it live is really, really good because I'm still in coach mode in that situation. So it's kind of like you're seeing it and it's happening. And you want to cheer, but also at the same time, you're still being critical in terms of the things that you're seeing from that standpoint. Like when I go back and I watch it that night, you actually get back and get to watch it as a fan in that standpoint, as well as being critical. Uh, but the deal is he's doing a really good job. And it, and it all shows up from a practice standpoint and then his preparation in the meeting room and then in the walkthrough. So what he's doing is, is what he's put the work in to be able to do. Obviously, it's not your main focus on the game day to be watching Deshaun Bishop on the sidelines when Dylan Sampson's in, but is there anything that you have noticed about him on the sidelines, his ability to learn when Sampson's out on the field, and what have you seen from him on game days? Yeah, it's not just Deshaun. It's, it's the rest of the backs as well. When you sit there and look at Peyton, you sit there and look at Cam and the rest of the guys in our room, like when we're in our huddle, everybody's there. You know, in the same situation when we're making adjustments on the sideline, everybody's there getting those adjustments and corrections, but they also uplifting each other as well. Like Deshaun to be the first guy that comes over when Sam is in was like, hey, this drive's on you. We got to make sure we're doing a really good job. And then when Deshaun's in there, Sam's doing the exact same thing. And I think that's the thing that pours into that positive energy into each one of them that, man, no matter who in there, man, I'm uplifting my brother that's in there right now because I know my opportunity is going to come. But at the same time, I'm watching the game, understanding when I get in there, here's the flow of the game. Here's how they're fitting it up on defense so that I'm able to get in there a lot quicker and make my reads a lot faster as well. How would you assess the, the pass protection from your guys and, and when, when the team is you know, giving up some sacks? Yeah. How, how much more of an emphasis is there on that in practice and everything now? Man, uh, from my standpoint, you know, from a running back view, man, we got to do a better job of finishing. You know, we understand who to go get. We just got to do a better job of finishing. Like, at the end of the day, yeah, being in the right place, understanding the guy that you got to go get, we just got to do a better job of finishing it off. You know what I'm saying? From a technique standpoint. And then just training. You know, that's the number one deal for us as running backs. Just make sure we finish in the blocks. <clears throat> when you look at Alabama defensively and their structure, what, mm -hmm. what are the challenges that, that are different this week running the football than 
maybe this past week, how similar are they to some of the other 3-3-5 looks that you played? I think they're a little bit different from a structure standpoint and kind of the way that you see them on tape in terms of how they play. They do a really good job going in and out of personnel groupings as well in terms of front formations. Um, and then that defensive line is very, very active, very athletic, and those linebackers fit in exactly the way that you expect them to. Being highly downhill guys that run to the point of contact also do a really good job in coverage as well. I think the number one deal that you see that they do a good job of being able to fit the run. Um, and you can see the mentality, number one, of the coordinator that they have on defense, which they got some very high-level coaches on their side of the ball that I got a ton of respect for. But you see them, the personality comes out, you know what I'm saying, from the defensive front to also that back end until, in terms of the second level. Like, they're all playing together and fitting together. Structurally, we just got to continue to do a really good job from our standpoint, just understand what our assignment is and execute at a very high level, and we'll be fine. I know Dylan wants to be that every down kind of running back. Are you doing anything differently throughout the week to make sure he is able to maintain this longevity through the season, especially now getting ready for a physical Alabama team? Yeah, it's the same situation we kind of do. We, we always do a really good job of monitoring the reps during practice and make sure that we're taking the reps that we need to. Um, and then he does a really good job from a body maintenance standpoint. He's always in here getting extra treatment and he's always really taking care of his body from a weight room standpoint. During practice, we always try to manage the reps. You know, we always try to get our work in, but not overloading from that standpoint. Coach, kind of following up on that, Dylan got 29 touches in, in, in the last game. Mm -hmm. I know you've talked before about wanting to ride the hot hand. Obviously, yeah. he's playing really well. How do you find the balance between riding him as much as you can but not overloading him, like you said, uh, in a game specifically? Yeah, it's kind of a field standpoint in terms of you understand once they get to a certain level, if he's tired, you know, all right, we got to sub another back in at that point in time. Um, just like the drive that we had right there in the second half, like when well, we went on that long drive and he scored the touchdown and then we get the turnover, well, he just went on that long drive. Let's put another back in that's fresh. So we do a really good job of monitoring him from that standpoint in terms of, okay, who's tired in, in that standpoint? Because we always want to have fresh legs in the game attacking defenses, especially when defenses are tired as well. So we do a really good job just monitoring from that standpoint. How much carryover maybe structurally has there been for Alabama from, you know, from what y'all have seen from what they've done in the past? Because obviously there's new staff there, some mm -hmm. new ideas. How, how different is it? So for me, I wasn't here in the past, you know what I'm saying, being able to coach against these guys. So what I've seen is what Coach Womack has been able to do so far. Um, I think it is some carryover, um, especially with the four-down structure a little bit, um, and then especially with the odd front package as well. Uh, but I think, number one, you're seeing him put his spin on it, you know what I'm saying, from a defensive structural standpoint um, in terms of what he wants his identity to be on that side of the football. Um, but it's still going to be Alabama, you know what I'm saying, from a defensive structural standpoint. They still want to run and hit. So.